How many feature scripts have you written? Oof, gosh, let me think. Uh, feature scripts, we have written one, two, I have to count, probably seven or eight feature scripts, and then probably, oh, two or three television or teleplay scripts, you know, shorter, like pilots or, um, you know, our, our podcast script or... Um, so, so probably about a dozen scripts in total. And then within those dozen completed scripts, you know, certainly we have a, you know, a giant board with all of our ideas. And then we have a lot of treatments for things that we've written. And we've written a lot of, um, you know, we've written a lot of pitch decks for a lot of our projects. And we've written a lot of series Bibles or series pitches for a lot of our television projects. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of writing, a lot of writing, but yeah, I would think, I would say about a dozen probably feature screenplays. And when you first started writing these features, who would you send them to for reading? You know, when we first started writing features, I think the, um, there was probably, probably about there was, uh, there was two major things we would do, I guess I would say, or, or I think would recommend for people. I mean, certainly like your friends, um, if, if you have friends in the industry, fantastic, that's great, send them to those friends. Um, and even if you don't have friends in the industry, still anybody who's willing to read it, I would say send it to them. Um, because it can, it can take people a while to read a screenplay and get back to you. Um, but also, I think what was really helpful for us in the early days is you can find uh, there's there's many of them online. The you know there are screenwriting services or screenwriting consultancy agencies and um, screenwriting contests, things like that. But I think what was really helpful for us, and when we first started, we would do a lot of those because I think what's helpful is the turnaround time. As I said, like you can. Of course, and, and I recommend getting the scripts to your friends and, and family and people like that, or people in the industry if you know it, but of course, it can, it can really take people a while to read a screenplay, think about it, get back to you. You know, we're all busy. Everybody's, you know, doing something or doing their job or they've got their own scripts. So I think a big benefit in the early days for us of sending it to those screenwriting like coverage places or consulting agencies was just the turnaround time. You were able to get it in, you know, sometimes it's it's quick, sometimes it's, you know, 72 hours or a week or two weeks. And I think especially when you're, at least for us, when you're just starting out, having that instant feedback or, or, or quick turnaround feedback was really helpful because we could keep up the momentum of our script, you know what I mean? Like when you're writing it, like being able to get notes quickly would help us just get back into a draft and really either keep on shaping it or keep adjusting things that maybe didn't work so well or and, and maybe if we did hear that they were working well, you know, we would we would leave them. And I think another benefit to sending it to those agency, you know, those screenwriting competitions or consulting consulting agencies was, you know, you're just doing it blind. Like if you send it to your family or your friends, they know you, maybe perhaps they even know the story of the screenplay. And when you send it to those people, it's just, you know, it's anonymous. Um, so it's like, I think um, they can give you sometimes you know, brutal feedback or honest feedback about what's really working or what's not working. And they're not necessarily as concerned about, you know, your feelings or, or, <laughs> or how, you know, the story or, you know, they don't necessarily know that it was maybe something that happened to you or something from your past or whatever it is. They really just focus on that script. So I, I would suggest that. And I think that's a really um, helpful thing to do. And I know that helped us a lot in the beginning. Do you think Hollywood's closed off? I don't think Hollywood's closed off. I think, I think, um, you know, again, because I've been doing this for so long, I think Hollywood 
and I've been in the business 25 years, 25 or 20 plus years, you know, I think it's more open now than probably I've ever seen it before because of social media. I think, you know, I, I know social media is like a, a double-edged sword. Like, you know, you have outrage over Game of Thrones episodes, but you can also like really, I've seen a lot of people like really legitimately advance their careers as actors or screenwriters or directors, whatever it is, because they're they're just releasing stuff online. They're able to find an audience and then use that to kind of, you know, uh, catapult themselves into something else or to find a, a representation as a, as a writer or as an actor or director. And I think an, another thing that actually is kind of cool about, you know, Hollywood becoming more open and with social media too, you know, you have things like crowdfunding that never existed before. And I even, you know, we've crowdfunded ourselves. And it's just been like an amazing resource and we were able to do so much more for our films because we did have, we were able to generate those funds. So no, I, I don't think Hollywood is closed off. I think that this is probably the most open I've ever seen it. Are you okay if the two of you never get a feature film made? Will you be okay with shorts and little, you know, web series and things like that? No. Uh, no, we're, uh, to answer your question, I, we are really always striving for that feature film. That is really important to us, you know, important to me and, and important to Sarah, my partner. Um, you know, we, we love film and we love television and we've made a lot of really wonderful short films, films that we're really proud of. And we're going to continue making them. We're going to continue writing scripts and making webisodes and podcasts, but there's one thing that we really haven't fully tackled yet. And I, I don't think we can really cross that off, cross our list, you know, our uh, bucket list, so to speak, our filmmaking bucket list until we hit the feature. And so that's something we're still pushing towards. And I think, um, you know, we've gotten close many, many times. And obviously the the pandemic that we've all just went through and that we're starting to come out of now, it sort of threw everybody for a, for a loop. Um, I know a lot of filmmaker friends and actor friends, and I know a lot of people's projects were sort of put on hold. Some people were able to continue working, but but I think, um, yeah, that, I think that made a lot of people lose momentum. So I think um, now that everything's back, I think we're ready to to you know, throw our hat in the ring again and, and go after the feature next. And are you too cautious in, in terms of you want to do it right? Like, you know, I see people do amazing crowdfunding campaigns, but then it turns out, oh, we didn't raise enough. We've got to go back. Yeah. And, and I know that's difficult. I, yeah. To, to, and, and it happens. It, it, it happens with everything in life. You it think it's this amount. All and it's, the time. I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you how many stories I've seen about people making features that have taken them years, literally years, to make one feature where they, you know, shoot uh, something and then a, a year later come back and shoot something else. And these aren't documentary features where you can, you know, these are narrative feature films where you're using the same actors for, you know, sometimes years at a time. I've heard so many stories like that. Um, and, and so, yeah, we are a little bit cautious in the films that Sarah and I enjoy making and the, the things we like to do are kind of high concept, a little bit complex or a little bit complicated. There's a lot of, usually there's a lot of moving parts in our short films and in, in our webisodes and in things like that. So we are cautious. I don't think we're ready. We're, we're, I don't think we're going to jump into a feature until we kind of um, feel like we have you know, there's, you're never going to feel completely comfortable. You're always, no matter what you do, I think, making films, you're always, there. there's always a, an unknown, you know, always, always. And there's always going to be a million problems every day. Um, but yeah, we are, we are being a little bit cautious about exactly how we're going to jump into a feature. 
but I, I'm hoping that, you know, from the experiences we've had on all of our shorts and just with all of the festivals we've been to, you know, I, I think we can kind of see uh, a little more of, of where it could go wrong. Um, and so we're, it, it's, it's really going to be about trying to um, kind of course correct ahead of time so it doesn't go wrong while we're in the moment. Do you have a date, a target date, like 2025, <laughs> the feature will be finished? Or... You know, we, I, I, we don't have a target date of when we're trying to make a feature. And I feel like, at least for me personally, I've kind of tried to get over that idea that I need to have it done at a certain time or I need to be a a certain age or I need to, um, you know, X, Y, and Z needs to fall into place before I can go out and do it. I'm trying not to let myself um, get distracted by that. But I, I do want to focus first on making it excellent and also making it realistic, something that we can accomplish and accomplish well you know, set out to do and really execute it at a very high, high level. But, you know, for whatever budget we're able to, um, to, to get or to finance it for, I guess, if that makes sense. Like, I want to make sure like we're, we're being realistic. Um, and that we're just gonna, we're really going to deliver that. So that's more important to, to me and to us than to put a ticking clock on it.